and I'm going to mute. So let me know if you need. All right. Thank you, Kalisha. Um, that's Kalisha, our family engagement coordinator, but she wears many different hats here. She's does a lot of different things. And one is she's very techno savvy. So she and she's very creative. She did the um, invitation and you, you can see her background. That kind of gives you an idea a little bit how, she, how um, creative she is. So we appreciate everything Kalisha does. So I'm going to say thank you now, even before we get started, because I know everything's going to run smoothly today because it's in good hands. So, okay, well, welcome everybody to um, Summit Early Learnings, Head Start, Early Head Start Health Ed Services Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, my name is Holly Lehman. I'm the health coordinator um, at Summit. We have some good information that will be shared today from our community partners and Summit staff will give a snapshot of what health and nutrition looks like here at Summit. Um, we start planning this meeting in the cold months of winter and thought spring into wellness um, sounded like a good idea. So uh, we went with that and you're gonna hear um, a lot of our topics revolving around wellness today. Uh, we appreciate if you could go to your chat box, if you know how to do that in the bottom and um, let everyone know who you are and what agency you are from. Um, or if you're a parent or a staff, that way um, can kind of keep track of who's here, have a little attendance of who joined us today. Um, so we know who, who all's in the meeting. Um, and you may have some questions for our speakers. Uh, we appreciate if you can save asking the questions until the end of each presentation. Um, that way that'll give um, our speakers a chance to talk and um, everyone can hear what they're saying. Uh, we also will have an opportunity later in the program for you to give any kind of input um, into our Head Start and Early Head Start program, or you can share something that's going on with your agency. And we also have a survey at the end of the program. It's a survey monkey. All you have to do is click on the link in the chat box, and we appreciate um, you giving your feedback so we know how to plan for next year. Okay. Well, I think everybody's about here. I'm not sure. We'll just keep admitting, Kalisha will keep admitting people as uh, we go along. So we're going to get started. Um, I'd first like it to introduce Doug Bertanzetti, who is our executive director. He's going to give an overall update on what's been happening at Summit this school year. All right. Thanks, Holly. And thanks, thanks everybody for being here, our presenters and everybody just participating this morning. We appreciate you being here. We also want to thank you all for partnering with Summit. You're all very important to us, um, helping us to fulfill our, our mission, which is building the future through early childhood education, one family at a time. Uh, I'm going to get on a little bit of a soapbox here, so bear with me. So I, I don't know if all of you know, but probably most of you know that early childhood education, the sector has been facing difficult times. <clears throat> Since 2020, about 1,900 child care facilities have closed their doors in PA alone. Uh, child care wages and the effects of those low wages um, on staffing being the number one one issue. Uh, and you all know that the lack of child care or quality child care really impacts families and it impacts businesses and it impacts the economy as a whole. So it's it's something we really need to fix. Uh, raising tuition is not the answer. Families can't handle already, you know, an already high tuition payment. Uh, that's burdensome on families. So it's really quite the conundrum. We need to work together to come up with creative solutions. Uh, so currently, we've been working with, with legislators, um, community leaders, businesses, trying to come up with ways to fill in the gaps that, that we as child care agencies face. Uh, if you would, please talk with people. Talk with people about the importance of quality early childhood education. Talk with people about uh, a child's first five years, five to eight years the importance of a healthy mind and body, the development of the mind and body during that crucial time. Uh, it's extremely important for our children, and then eventually those children grow up to be adults, and we need healthy children and healthy adults. So please talk to folks. That's that's the number one way to get things fixed and, and to talk about the importance of early childhood education. I'm really confident that we'll get it figured out, but it's not going to be easy, and it's going to take, take the efforts of many to get it figured out. So I, I think others are going to talk about programs and changes. That's been our biggest uh, issue right now. <clears throat> our staffing is pretty good. It could be better. 
<clears throat> and we we would like like to see it get um, you know as best as it could not only with us but all agencies across the state and the, and the United States all childhood the whole sector needs some help so talk talk about us talk about the importance and um, you know together we can try to fix this out fix this so once again thank you all for being here uh, this morning and thank you for your continued support Holly I think back to you all right <clears throat> thank you Doug. Yeah, lots going on all the time here at Summit. So we're going to be starting out with our first speaker right away. Her name is Sheila Packer. Um, she is the health and wellness manager at Evangelical Community Hospital. Our health team knows Sheila fairly well since she is our training coordinator for the many pediatric first aid CPR classes that we have throughout the year. Um, she has been a great support for us and answers many of our many, many emails. Um, so I'll turn it over to Sheila and she can share about the programs at EVAN. Good morning. Thank you, Holly. Yes. Yeah, so Community Health and Wellness has been providing community outreach programs for probably over 30 years now. Um, and these programs range from birth before a child is born all the way up to our senior population. So we're responsible in when I talk about birth for our prepared childbirth education classes. We have nurses, RNs, um, educators that present those programs to the community. Um, and that also includes our child safety seat inspection. So anyone um, that has a newborn or has a child growing out of a car seat, even grandparents and new parents to a foster child, we will even help them get their car seat fitted correctly so that the baby is or the child is safe in a car seat. And we also educate on the age of when a child should graduate from different car seats just to a seat belt and then out of the back seat. So a lot of education goes into that program as well. Um, and then we move on into our school age child care, preschool age child care. We do a lot. And when I say a lot, we do a lot of education in probably over 12 different school districts in our, our surrounding area, as well as preschools. We're in Summit, all of your locations. We travel even out to Lewistown um, and do educational programs out there. Uh, and some of our educational programs are um, hygiene, um, how to take care of themselves, um, stress, empathy, how to deal with that, you know, stress, tobacco, smoking education. And, and that seems to be starting at a younger age nowadays. So we really like to get into the, the schools at a younger age and start to talk about that and get the, the conversation started. We do hands-only CPR. When Holly talked about CPR, we start them as young as middle school, even elementary school, and getting them understanding the importance of doing something when it comes to saving someone's life if they have a cardiac event. Online safety, we talk about things with, you know, recognizing what is safe and what is not safe and how to um, deal with that and who to talk to if, you, if something comes up that you're not quite sure of. Other health and wellness, just taking care of yourself by, um, exercise, eating healthy, um, hand washing, keeping yourself healthy and safe. A lot of different programs that we do within the school districts and all those programs are free. All they need to do is call our office and get in touch with us and we can come out and do a program for a group as small as you know four or five children. Um, other programs that we offer, as Holly mentioned, first aid and CPR is a big one. We work with area businesses that do um, education on um, CPR and first aid. We also offer community classes too. And our hospital is actually a training center. So I, I manage over a hundred instructors over the course of a year. Um, and everything comes through our department as far as invoices, releasing cards, hopefully keeping, you know, all the information and education about what's changing in CPR and with the American Heart Association and keeping all our instructors up to date and current on all of that. Other programs that we offer for youth are our safe sitter program. So we do offer that babysitting course throughout the year. We usually offer anywhere from five to seven programs throughout the year for kids wanting to become a babysitter. Usually that's their first job. And we also, again, incorporate that uh, first aid and CPR uh, component in that class. 
Then we take it to the other end of the age spectrum and we do our uh, AARP smart driver courses. And those have become very popular. So most of our staff in our department are um, smart driver safety certified and can teach our AARP classes. Then we move into some of our, our programs that are a little bit um, unique in that we offer a blood screening every month. And this is a low cost blood screening. So we find in this area that health access is something that people struggle with. And blood work, lab work tends to sometimes be very expensive and costly. So we've developed a program that we can provide low cost blood screenings. And, and when we say screenings, it's not every test that you would think of or that a doctor would order, um, but you're, the majority of those things, your cholesterol, your, your CBCs, your CMPs, thyroid testing. Um, so a lot of those tests that maybe would be a screening for a further down the line of um, looking at disease management. And then we offer a program for that, that um, age of the AARP and that 55 plus is called our Wellness 360 program. Every month we do an educational program and other special things for just that age group. And then they offer incentives with area businesses. They get little coupons and they can do some things that are special and unique to that, that program. And that's run by one of our educators and it's done very well. We have close to 400 members in that and it's only been around for about a year and a half now. So going very well with that. Um, and then we also bring our collaborations in-house and we collaborate with several of our departments within the hospital to do some free screenings as well. We offer skin screenings every month. We offer hearing screens every other month. And we just started back up with our free vein screenings. And we do those between the months of March and uh, September. So again, these are free screenings, just kind of looking at things. And if there is, you know, something that they find that you would need additional um, additional appointment with the with the physician again that's totally up to the person and the and the, if they want to go and further explore those options and then one of our i think most unique programs that we offer and maybe you're hearing more about this in in the world of health and wellness is health coaching we have four health coaches that are certified in our department and really what a health coach does is it, it tries to help people stay on track with their health and wellness goals it identifies goals and barriers of of those health goals and it just helps keep them um, in tune with some of the resources in our area that could help them with their health and wellness goals. And then another part of our um, health and wellness and that health coaching piece of it is we have a certified um, freedom from smoking facilitator that helps people who want to quit tobacco use, smoking, vaping, those types of things. Um, and it's about a seven or eight um, meeting appointments, a seven week program, but there's eight appointments, eight meetings that they have to help people really try to quit smoking. Um, and I'm, I'm going through a lot and I'm looking at my notes because if I didn't, I would forget some of our programs that we offer. Um, and then the hospital probably about seven or eight years ago was awarded a grant through the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency to also offer for Snyder Union in Northumberland free Narcan training as well as free Narcan kits. So that is something that we have been doing for several years. And just recently, as most of us are aware, this has become quite an epidemic in, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is actually one of the top 10 states for um, substance abuse and substance overdoses. So um, we are distributing quite a bit of, of Narcan throughout our, our region. So again, anybody who needs that free of charge just needs to contact our office. And then some of our larger events, and I think some of you may have attended this about a week ago, we did our, our children's health fair, which was a huge success. And we just brought that back after about five year hiatus um, due to COVID, but it was a wonderful program, um, hope, hoping to be able to do this annually every year again. It was, it was really fun. It's one of our best events. Then we do a women's health screen every year where it's a low cost screening event where women can take advantage of several screening opportunities. And we use our mobile medical unit now to do that program on. And then our senior health and fitness day and then our women's health and fitness day. So some of our larger community events where we bring in other vendors um, to support that, those efforts. And then last 
program that I'm going to mention is things that we work with directly with our businesses called our wellness at work program. So internally, we do a, a, an employee wellness program. And now we take that out into um, businesses. And we've been doing this again, probably for about 20, 25 years, doing external worksite wellness. Um, some of those programs include our first aid and CPR that we do for our area businesses. And then we do biometric screenings so they can see a snapshot of you know, their health and wellness with blood work, body composition, uh, blood pressure, and take a look at that. And then hopefully get an aggregate report from that and the... Um, the employer can look at that and maybe design programs and efforts that will help increase the, the wellness of their employees. And then we also do challenges such as walking programs, um, eating programs, weight loss programs. So a lot of different things that we offer throughout the year for our business partners and, um, and such. So I know it's a lot of information, and if there are any questions, the only thing I'm going to mention lastly is how to get in touch with us. You can go to the website, www.evanhospital.com, and click on the health and wellness tab, and the majority of our programs are right there, or you can give us a call directly to our department, 570-768-3200. So thank you for allowing me to talk about all of our wonderful programs. Any questions? I just was wondering that for the safe sitter program, are there is there a low age for um, young people to do the safe sitter program? Yeah, safe sitter requires the children to be 11 years old to take the program. Anything else? All right, again, thank you so much for letting me talk here today and let you know about all our wonderful programs. I hope to hear from some of you. And I do need to go. I apologize. I have another event I need to run to. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful time. And I'm really glad that you are um, taping this because I would like to hear the rest of it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sheila. Well, I didn't realize there was so much going on. You guys, no matter you're so busy, you're really busy with everything that goes on. Um, so much to, to do. And yes, we really enjoyed the Children's Health Fair. Thanks for putting that on. We're glad to see it come back. We participated for years and at the mall. And it was really, really, you guys did a fabulous job. It's an awesome event. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, next we have Shauna Miser, who is the Head Start, Early Head Start Director, and she's just going to give some updates on um, these programs at Summit. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you today. Um, so the Health Advisory, the Health Services Advisory Committee is really an integral part of our Head Start program here at Summit. Um, and just, I always like to give a quick snapshot of what Head Start is in case anybody here um, is not familiar. It is a federal program that has the primary goal of really developing uh, full school readiness for children and um, getting their families ready to support that as well. And so Summit has actually participated in the Head Start program for 54 years and counting, which is really exciting. Um, Head Start and Early Head Start has services that support uh, mothers who are expecting, as well as infants up to age five. So we really have the whole, the whole range there. And the Head Start program takes a three-prong approach. Um, so first is family wellness, really um, building the parents up as the child's first and most important teacher. Um, next is the child development piece, which we, which is most easily visible in our classrooms and our home-based programs. And um, we're all here today for the third prong, which is the health and nutrition piece. Um, as Doug mentioned earlier, you know, research shows that a, a child learns best when they're in uh, their best health. So, and when the whole family is healthy, really. So I have just a couple of updates for you today. Um, this time last year, we were talking a lot about how we were moving back toward in-person services. Well, we're in a better place this year, I'm happy to say. Um, we are really fully, fully returning to our activities that were previously suspended um, during the pandemic. And um, some of those are, we're doing uh, blood, blood level screenings, we're getting back to 
teeth brushing in the classrooms, family style meals, um, and fun things like family events where everybody can gather together and um, really embrace their, their child's learning and development. So a couple of things uh, that we have going on this year is we have been in a full year now of offering our parenting workshop series. We're actually finishing up this week um, with the spring session. So this is a four part weekly series. Um, it's, it's based on an evidence-based curriculum called Positive Solutions for Families. And um, basically the whole family gets to come out in the evening. We provide childcare, we have dinner together, and the parents are able to um, really learn about how their child's behavior is uh, communicating a message. And so then the parent is able to really look past the piece that may be um, confusing to them and really address the, the need of the child. Um, and learn some really great strategies, easy, basic strategies that they can use at home um, to help their child and their development. So we've been um, really enjoying rolling that over, out over the past year. Um, Kalisha Brungard here is our uh, leader and Union Snyder for developing that. And then uh, Rhonda Swisher is in our Mifflin County um, group. So yeah, we've, we've had great attendance and great engagement um, and families are able to take home tools that uh, they can you know, use daily at home with their children. Secondly, um, looking to our early Head Start program, um, we've been really excited to, and I think both of our um, early Head Start home base managers are here um, on the meeting, um, but we were able to have a uh, go through the certification process for our hovers tool, which is the um, home visitor rating scale. So this is an evidence-based assessment tool. And basically the, it helps the supervisors uh, go through different metrics of how the home visit is being conducted. So uh, these are parent educators that go into the home and they work with parents on things like child development, um, again, strategies for, you know, reading children's behavior and really just being able to bond with their children so that they can develop fully. Um, and so it gives the home visiting supervisors tools to uh, really coach the home visitors on just making that um, ideal support for the parents. And again, the parent is the first and most important educator um, in the child's life. So just really giving the parent the tools and support that they need um, during that home visit experience. So those are really the, the two updates. Um, we have a lot else going on, but I know we're limited in time. So just a couple of highlights there. And um, I can pass it off then to Deb Field, who is our nutrition coordinator. Hi. Um, Summit is a sponsor of the child, the National Child and Adult, Adult Care Food Program. Um, we have 18 sites that are participating in the CACFP and CACFP, um, one of the major benefits of having children enrolled in our educational programs, um, whether they're enrolled in our centers or our school-based sites, is that we provide free meals and snacks for children and our meals and snacks follow the um, U.S. American dietary guidelines, which are low fat, low sugar, and low sodium. Um, our meals and snacks, um, I'm glad to report that we are now um, back to serving meals family style, which allows children to um, practice fine gross motor skills and their social skills during meal times. Um, one of the changes this year with our nutrition department is that we've had a couple of our long-term service employees, our cooks who have reached retirement age. And so we have had, um, you know, had to say goodbye to them, but we have also welcomed some new faces in our nutrition department. So um, I'm happy to report that, um, you know, that we're doing well in that department and that our food program um, continues to um, get better. Thank you. And now we have Emily Walker. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emily Walker, and I'm the Mental Health and Disabilities Specialist for Summit covering Union and Snyder Counties. 
Um, over the past year, we've continued to partner with our local intermediate units and CMSU to facilitate early intervention referrals and coordinate early intervention services for children in all of our programs. As we continue to move forward and manage the impacts of COVID on the children in our programs, um, their social emotional development continues to be the key focus area in all of our programs. Our teachers continue to use the second step curriculum in our preschool classrooms, and those are teaching um, emotional regulation skills, social skills, and friendship skills that are needed for children to be successful once they move on to kindergarten. Um, through generous monetary gifts provided by some of our community partners and grant funds, Summit has had the opportunity to purchase new social emotional learning games, books, and materials. And also at our Lewisburg Children's Center, we've also been able to establish um, a social emotional library for our teachers to utilize. This year has been our second year of agency-wide PBIS implementation. Our PBIS leadership team continues to meet on a biweekly basis to monitor implementation progress and evaluate our benchmarks of quality to understand where we need to spend more time and how we can best support our teachers in implementation of this program. One of our most significant projects this year has been the implementation of our new behavior incident reporting system, which we're using to monitor challenging behaviors in our classrooms. The new data reporting system allows us to identify problem behaviors, parts of the classroom schedule where behaviors are most often occurring, and what the staff's responses are to those behaviors um, across our program as a whole in classrooms and with specific children. And from this data, we're able to identify and develop classroom-wide support plans and individualized support plans for children to help them be successful. <laughs> Excuse me. Carissa, the mental health and disabilities manager and myself have been facilitating a two-part training series with our teachers on this behavior incident reporting system. As of today, all of our Head Start classrooms have been able to complete the training and they are collecting data. We are excited to continue working with the pre-K counts teachers and our child care classrooms to complete these trainings. So we look forward to being able to collect more data and continue to support all of the children in our programs and classrooms. And now I'll hand it back over to Holly for our um, health services update. Thank you, Emily. Um, yes, I, I know the screen says Carissa Ziegler. It was a last minute this morning change. So um, we thank you, Emily, for um, coming to speak to us today. Thank you. And, the graphics are great, Kalisha. This is the first time I'm seeing this. And if you see a little kangaroo around. We have a mascot. His name's Poppy. So that's who you're seeing uh, if you're wondering what the kangaroo is all about. Um, so they're, they're awesome. Okay, so I want to start out by introducing the Summit Health team. We have Michelle Hill. She is our Union County nurse. And Amber Edison is our Snyder County nurse. And Christina Hayes is our... Um, Mifflin County nurse. So we we have Union Snyder and Mifflin counties that we serve at Summit. Um, they do an incredible job with all the multiple health issues, and they have lots to monitor and document and just follow up with. And, um, and they're they're integral and needed for um, all the functions that we have here at Health um, and all for all the children that are um, enrolled in the various Summit programs. Um, this year, uh, we've seen an increase in illness. Um, I didn't want to mention the word, but COVID is still around. We still have a few little here and there um, cases. So we continue to do all the measures of reporting to Department of Health and excluding for five days and wearing a mask five days and communication out to the parents. Um, so this year, though, we've done over the whole year, we've done a few revisions to our COVID policies and screening tools um, as we get updated guidance and recommendations from the CDC and the Department of Health. We also had more cases of flu, RSV, strep, and pink eye um, more than the last few years. And we're hoping that um, the trend continues to improve as spring gets closer. 
All of our health team nurses are certified instructors through the American Heart Association to teach heart savers, pediatric first aid, CPR, and AED classes. Um, we do classes for all of our staff that have expiring certifications or they're a new hire. Um, we have 90 days, the first 90 days of employment to, to complete that. Um, every two years, we have to get recertified um, as instructors. And last month, um, we we saw Sheila and we all passed our certification so we can keep continuing um, teaching classes. We also have our PQAS standardized instructor certification, which is required um, to have the certifications count for DHS. Um, so from August um, to the present time, we have nine, we have certified 90, 97 staff here at Summit, um, and we have a few more classes scheduled in the next few months um, before this um, school year is complete. Actually, I have one on Thursday. So we um, keep certifying staff as they need, and as we get, we got a lot of new staff, so of course then we have to do a lot of classes. Um, so we have um, our dental screenings um, days that we usually have in the fall, and that was in November for all three counties um, with the Geisinger Dental Team, which consists of a dental, a dentist, a dental hygienist, and um, they also have outreach come along for some dental education. And um, they do dental screenings and cleaning and a fluoride treatment. So in Union County, we had 44 children screened um, with 14 children that had cavities needed follow-up. In Mifflin County, we had 82 children screened with 43 that needed follow-up. In Snyder County, we had 65 children screened um, with 30 that needed to have follow-up. We also, for the first time this year, had a few children in our Snyder County school-based programs that attended the SMILES dental exams while they were at the Middleburg and West Snyder Elementary Schools. Um, and we also, have um, dental education programs in February, and that they were led by Geisinger UPMC and our own summit nurses. We have dental puppets that and fun activities and videos that we do with the children um, during those dental education program days. And lead poisoning um, can cause learning and behavior problems, especially in children under six, they are most at risk. So all um, Head Start and Early Head Start children that are over the age of two are gonna have the opportunity to get their lead levels checked. Um, we have four lead screening days scheduled during the month of April. Um, Geisinger phlebotomists will come to the centers to do a blood um, draw to check their lead, hemoglobin, and hematocrit levels. Um, we're hoping for good participation to possibly catch any children that may have elevated lead levels or, um, you know, WIC, WIC also does hemoglobin levels and we're very thankful to get those results too. Um, but, you know, if, if parents want to have their child's lead level checked or if they never had them checked, um, you know, we're... We're hoping for good participation. Okay, that's it um, for me. Um, so we're um, going to move on to our next speaker. Um, her name is Rachel Herman. Um, she is the Community Food Initiatives Coordinator at the Union Snyder Community Action Agency. Rachel's main responsibility at the Community Action Agency are to manage two community initiatives of CAA, the Food Hub at the Miller Center, and the Union Snyder Hunger Coalition. She is passionate about community-wide efforts to address food and nutrition insecurity in her community, and her work is centered around that goal. Before transitioning to a full-time position at CAA, Rachel served as an AmeriCorps member for three years serving at the Lewisburg Community Garden and CAA. Rachel is originally from Lewisburg and returned to her hometown after graduating from Gettysburg College with a degree in biology. So I asked Rachel to um, come and so she can share about her work with um, community food initiatives. Thank you for having me. I'm just going to share my screen really quickly. Um, nice. Okay. Everybody can see my screen. Yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, like Holly mentioned, I work for the community action agency uh, on the food access team. So as an agency, we have a number of different assistance programs for people with low income in Union Center counties. 
Um, in terms of food access programs, we have state funded food pantries in Union and Snyder counties. We have the Hunger Coalition and we have the Union County Food Hub. Um, and I'm gonna focus on the Union County Food Hub today because we're talking about health and wellness. Um, and that is our food initiative that really focuses on the connection between uh, food security efforts and health and wellness issues. Um, so that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, so for those of you who may not know, the Food Hub is at the Miller Center in Lewisburg. Um, it's literally in the kitchen space at the Miller Center. We share the space with uh, the retail cafe that operates out of that kitchen. Um, and the main initiative or the main goal of the Food Hub is to collect donations and then redistribute them. So it's acting as the hub in terms of collecting donations from community members, food drives, um, from retail. So we get donations from Giant and other grocery stores. Uh, we collect those donations. We also get from farms and gardens. Um, so we're able to uh, kind of focus on local produce. Um, so we gather all of those. Um, sort inventory, provide that service, and then redistribute the food that we get um, to different food access programs that exist. So the food pantries, the hot meal programs, the backpack programs, all are able to connect with the food hub to get the food that we collect um, through the food hub. Um, and that kind of network is determined or established through the Union Cider Hunger Coalition. So we use the Union Cider Hunger Coalition as a kind of our network of redistribution to different food access programs that are existing in the area already. Um, the Food Hub also does have a self-selection pantry. So anybody who is in emergency need of food can come to the Miller Center and get food right then and there. Uh, we have uh, non-perishable and perishable food that is available um, for emergency services. Um, it's definitely not meant to be a food pantry in itself. Um, it's a small self-selection pantry, but it is a kind of a stepping stone for individuals who need to know where the next food pantry is, need information about SNAP, that sort of thing. Um, so we accept referrals from our agency, other agencies, um, and then just walk-in customers. There's a doorbell. Anybody can come during our open hours and uh, get food from the food hub. We are in the kitchen as well. So we haven't really gotten to the cooking part of our vision for the Food Hub. The Food Hub was established in 2020. So we're still pretty early in terms of being a program. Uh, but our vision is to use the kitchen as kind of a community cooking space. Right now we use it um, to repackage food donations, sort food donations, and also for nutrition programs that we host. Um, so we have that space for demos and that sort of thing um, in the kitchen area. Um, so I just have some pictures to demonstrate what it actually looks like in operation. Um, so on the right, we have volunteers who hosted a very large uh, food collection drive, and they were sorting the food right at the food hub. And then on the left is representatives from a food access program coming to pick up that food. Um, so the food came in through donation, and then we re redistribute it to another food access program who can use it. Um, like I said, we also have the self-selection pantry. That's what it looks like. It's small, but it is well-stocked um, with our donations. We also have a fridge, so people can get non-perishable and perishable products when they come um, and in, are in need of emergency food. Um, we also have a walk-in fridge at the Food Hub. Um, it's the retail uh, cafe. They came equipped with a huge walk-in fridge um, and walk-in freezer, and that's just unheard of in terms of food access programs having access to that sort of space. Uh, so we use it heavily during the summer, during the growing months. Uh, I talked about we get donations from our local farms and gardens, um, and that is a picture of what the fridge looks like um, after a week of donations. Um, and we really want to focus on th those donations because not Every other program in the area can't really focus on perishable donations because of the lack of cold storage space and because we want to focus on the nutritious products going throughout the charitable food system. So um, playing that role as focusing on produce donations is what, what we would like to do through the Food Hub. Um, and our gardens um, and farms that donate to us, I have them listed. We have, these are our regular donors, but we, anybody can donate to us. Um, so a private gardener can drop off food at the food hub. 
Um, but these are kind of the established partner organizations that we work with. Uh, the Lewisburg Community Garden, Bucknell Farm, Dreamcatcher Farm, Walnut Acres, and Penn's Creek. Uh, we have a relationship with the Lewisburg Farmer's Market, so vendors who are at uh, the Farmer's Market on Wednesdays can drop off their excess product to us um, at the Food Hub, and we're also working on pickup uh, from the Farmer's Market as well. And then St. John's Church um, in Lewisburg has a community garden as well, and they donate regularly to us as well. Um, and what we do with that pop-up uh, or with the produce that we get is distribute it through the pop-up produce stand. So every week uh, during the growing season, which is May through October for us, um, on Thursdays, we give away this produce that we're collecting. Um, it's all local. Most of our partners grow with organic practices, so it's really nutritious foods. Um, it's a great opportunity for nutrition education as well, uh, because there's new produce items that people may not be familiar with. So we are able to provide uh, recipes and other nutrition programming uh, on site at the pop up produce stand. Uh, so there's no registration required for that program. Uh, anybody that shows up can get uh, some free produce um, on Thursday evenings. And then in addition, because of our a location at the Miller Center, the partners of Geisinger and Evan, we again are focusing really on health and wellness through the Food Hub. So we do that by providing some nutrition education classes as well. We partner with Penn State Extension and other organizations um, to provide those programs. Um, and we have a few coming up that I wanted to highlight. So Seeds to Supper is with Penn State Extension's Master Gardeners. That's going to be in Sealands Grove. Dining with Diabetes is going to be at the Miller Center with Penn State Extension Nutrition Educators as well. And then the pop-up produce stand is starting very soon. It's going, it's spring now. Uh, so we're going to have some produce coming into the Food Hub, actually. We don't have a start date for that uh, yet, but it's going to be early May when we start giving out some of that gorgeous produce. So that is what's happening at the Food Hub. Uh, my contact information is on the screen if you would like to get in touch. Um, but I can take any questions now too. All right, well, I thank you for letting me share some information about the Food Hub today um, with you all. Thank you, Rachel. I think that seeds to supper sounds interesting. Like maybe maybe I should ask, like what what is that? And the what yeah. what how does that work? What's that program about? Yeah, so that program um is designed for households with low income, but it's a gar intro gardening class. Um so it seeds to supper teaches you how to grow, start a garden, that sort of thing, but also how to harvest and use your your harvest in your meals uh, for nutritious meals. So it runs the gambit from uh, seeds to supper. It's a six week course every week. Um, and yeah, especially designed for people with limited resources and kind of trying to figure out how, how they can grow their own food. Is that a free program or does, yeah. is there a cost? Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. Is all of the programs we offer uh, through the Food Hub are free. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to mention as well, sorry, I didn't during my slide presentation, but the Food Hub, to stay up to date on our programs, the best way to do that is through the Community Action Agency's Facebook page. We don't have a great website that's uh, updated with all of our programs, but we do have things going on. Uh, so if you want to stay updated on those programs, uh, I would suggest following the Facebook page for CAA. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that information. Thank you for your um, part in feeding hungry people in Union Snyder County. We appreciate yes, of course. That. Thank you. Good. Okay. Well, we'll move on to our next speaker. I'd like to introduce Kathy Weller. Um, just going to read a little bit about her. She is a 4-H educator from Snyder County who believes in the power of making the best better. This 4-H motto has helped her increase membership programs and collaborations with others. Since becoming employed with the Pennsylvania State University 21 years ago, Kathy has served as a co-chair for the local 4-H camping team, state volunteer management working group, and the Pennsylvania Association of Extension 4-H Youth Development. Professionals Members Award and Recognition, Recognition Committee. She most recently accepted her, an invitation to serve as an advisor for the Pennsylvania 4-H State Council team and will work with this group of teens who serve as role models for other 4-Hers and represent the program at various events around the state. Her biggest professional accomplishment today has been receiving the 
Mer 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 Meritorious Service Award from the National Association of Extension for H Youth Development Professionals in 2022 during the National Conference held in Madison, Wisconsin. Kathy lives in Middleburg with her husband, Steve. She is involved in the Beaver Community Fair, helping with livestock, 4-H entries, and sponsorships. She also volunteers with fundraising activities for the Crossville Fire Company. So, okay, Kathy, if you're there, let's, we like to hear what you have to say about 4-H. I am here. Oh, there you, you are. Okay, um, good. Sorry, I gave you such a mouthful to read. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Sorry, I messed up one of, at least one of the words. Oh, that's all good. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen with just a couple slides here that I have. Um, so you should all see a slide now that just says Pennsylvania 4-H, correct? Okay, perfect. Yep. So I'd like to thank the um, Summit Early Learning staff for inviting me to present today. And while many of you may think of 4-H as being uh, for youth with agriculture related projects, we're much more than that. Uh, it's a great place for building the foundation of success. We're a community of encouraging adults and welcoming kids who love to roll up our sleeves and learn by doing. We work, serve, and have fun through, together through all kinds of projects um, in school based and after school programs and as individual members. As I go through the presentation, feel free, if you have any questions, to um, put them in the chat. I'll answer them at the end. Um, if not, I'll share my res responses um, with you after the SEL for you guys uh, to review later. In keeping with today's theme, I wanted to share some information, information with you that 4-H has in the healthy living area. Youth who participate in healthy living projects develop life skills that include creativity, responsibility, teamwork, community service, and a positive attitude, along with critical thinking, problem solving, and a sense of self-worth. Our healthy living projects um, that we're gonna highlight in, on this slide are, they, uh, I'm sorry, healthy living projects highlight careers in health science, culinary arts, early childhood education, compassion and caring for others, and fulfilling a healthy lifestyle and making positive choices. When members um, participate in these projects, they learn how to follow recipes, how to build and follow budgets. They learn first aid and how to help others. And they explore careers that are related to those areas as well. They gain skills in entrepreneurship, leadership, citizenship, communication, problem solving, critical thinking, compassion, and responsibility. Everybody needs to eat to live. The participants in the foods and nutrition projects learn how to make great recipes, how to follow recipes, create masterpieces in the kitchen, and they also learn about nutrition and healthy, healthy eating habits. Cooking up fun, participants learn how to prepare a meal from start to finish. They learn how to follow recipe and model, I'm sorry, modify recipes for dietary restrictions. They learn cost analysis and budgeting for meal planning as well. They um, also explore careers as being a chef, business owner of a store or an online store, family consumer science teachers, dietitian, nutritionist, and then also bakers and cake decorators. Projects in the Cooking Up Fun series include um, cooking series 101, 201, 301 and 401. So each of those progresses. They learn basics all the way up to um, preparing ethnic foods, baking flatbreads, ethnic breads, making candy, baking pastries. So it, it, it progresses through each of those series. Snack Attack is another project that the kids can take in the cooking series um, where they learn how to select and prepare healthy snacks. Kitchen Chemistry, we're all about the STEM. So the youth will learn what matter is and how it changes form, especially in different properties of matter um, with acid bases, um, discovering how everyday items and kitchen ingredients can be used in cool tests. Grill Master is another project where they learn about the safe use of a grill. A global gourmet, they create rich and delicious meals from different countries. And then beyond the grill, youth will learn a variety of other outdoor cooking skills. Breads Around the World, is designed for advanced 4-H foods and nutrition members who've already learned how to make quick breads and yeast breads. And then of course, cake decorating, as I mentioned earlier, um, they, they learn how to prepare the icing, um, decorate the cake, cupcakes, whatever it may be. And we actually have a couple contests held throughout the year 
um, where they're participating in cupcake wars. So if you're familiar with any of those TV shows, the kids across the state come together and compete in some of those contests too. Other opportunities in the cooking um, area are a cooking challenge. It's similar to Food Network's Chopped Junior. It's a fast paced and fun competition where junior and senior teams of individuals show off their cooking skills. They apply their creativity, knowledge of nutrition, food preparation, food safety, and leadership skills um, to prepare a recipe using a secret ingredient along with ingredients from their own food pantry. They make a presentation also about that prepared dish to a panel of judges. That presentation includes information about the nutritional value, serving size, food prep skills, and the decision-making used to prepare the recipe and plate that food. Winning individuals and teams advance to a national forage cooking challenge opportunity. We also have a virtual cooking camp uh, that youth eight to 18 and their families learn kitchen skills, food safety and nutrition, and youth have the opportunity to make one recipe each session. And participants in that uh, contest, or that, not contest, camp, learn proper measuring techniques, how to eat healthy using the my plate, and how to prepare and plan healthy and tasty meals and snacks. Maybe you're interested or your, your youth are interested in health and first aid projects. Well, we've got a place for that too. Participants learn how to keep fit. They learn how to increase brain power and express and learn about themselves in positive ways. Youth that participate in our 4-H health projects develops life skills that include healthy living and caring for others. The participants will learn how to care for um, each other with basic first aid. They explore physical and health effects of vaping. They identify positive and negative role models in their lives. They learn the connection between self-confidence and self-control. Oops, give me one second. My screen just flipped on me. They learn how, um, they learn the connection between, um, I'm sorry, they understand how to handle pressure so they can stay focused on their goals. Youth interested in health can explore careers like first responders, health medical professionals, and counselors. Projects include first aid and health, health rocks. And that health rocks curriculum, we actually um, taught during one of our summer programs at the rec center a couple summers ago, and it was a pretty popular program. That's a national program we've brought here to the university um, and then it's out to the county program. So if any of you are interested in more about that, it is a series um, with a goal of bringing youth, families, and communities across the United States together to reduce tobacco, alcohol, and drug use by youth. Um, it includes reducing youth smoking and tobacco use, helping youth build life and decision-making skills, and helping youth understand the consequences of those that usage. We also touch base on consumer and family sciences um, in the financial aspect. Members will learn uh, consumer education and management activities that teach them basic resource management. The projects are designed to teach responsible consumer skills to today's youth. They learn how to prepare a household budget. They learn how to care for a young child, uh, the prepare members for living on their own. Youth in this area can explore careers like finance, child care provider, early childhood education teacher, and banking. In the babysitting project, members learn how to keep children safe and happy, how to solve problems, how to talk to parents, how to be better prepared as a future parent, how to make a greater choice in child care, and how to manage money and reach goals. In finance, um, kids in cash teaches youth to become a wise consumer. And On My Own and OK is another curriculum that teaches lessons for children who must stay home alone after school. We also have social emotional projects. Um, the mindfulness program um, aims to promote mindful practices that lead to improvements in managing one's own goals, developing a sense of self, time management, stress management, emotional regulation, mindful eating practices. It includes curriculum titled Your Thoughts Matter, Mindful Me and Mindful Mechanics, and GEM, which stands for Get Experience in Mindfulness. So how can 4-H help? We can provide staff with training sessions and curriculum for the projects that we have to offer. Our summer staff or myself can come to you during summer camps and special events to provide workshops. Typically for the summer day camps, we attend once a week at each location and we provide the materials. 
We can work with you can to complete our group enrollment form, which we need for our reporting purposes. We also offer STEM projects and we also offer STEM projects, communications and expressive arts, environmental science, shooting sports, animal science, civic engagement and leadership. 4-H is open to youth five to 18, beyond the county program or opportunities for our members to participate in regional, district, state and national events. Learning is hands-on and results in high picking up skills that are valuable through life and often inspire rewarding career choices. We are in the process, just wanna put a little plug out there. Um, we are in the process right now of hiring a summer assistant and a STEM assistant. Um, to do some programming throughout our counties in Snyder Union and Montour. So if any of you know of any college age students um, that are looking for summer help, please send them my way, or you can find more information on our Facebook page um, to get to that job link so that they can apply. I can also share the job description with them if they wanna reach out beforehand, although they can find that on the website too. Um, Thank you uh, for letting me talk today. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. It's not necessarily a question, but I had to text my sister while you were talking because I didn't realize that you guys did so much. Oh yeah. <laughs> all the kids would be, I just think it's so beneficial, all the stuff. You know, I remember I went to one 4-H meeting when I was a kid. And it was nutrition stuff. So it's cool that it's all this budgeting and mindfulness and, you know. Yeah, it is. I appreciate that. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. We are looking always for volunteers like the rest of you, I'm sure, out there. So if anyone's interested in volunteering time or coming in and helping at a program that we have going on, um, I, I have all your contact information now, so I might reach out to some of you, too. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kathy. I'm, I'm with Kalisha. I didn't realize there was so much that you offer too. I know my daughter was in 4-H. She, she made a skirt or, you know, she did the sewing part, but um, yeah, there's so much to offer there. Thank you. So we'll move on to our last speaker of the day. It's Amber uh, Vazneski. She is the, sorry, Amber. Um, she is the nutrition educator at Penn State University Center for um, Childhood Obesity Research. Uh, she has been leading our Healthy Kids Club program for the past few years, um, and we're really glad to see her in person this year. Uh, she'll go give a few up about the nutrition education classes that she does for the children in our program. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Holly. Okay, are all of you seeing my screen? Mm -hmm. All right. So as Holly mentioned, I am from the Penn State Family Health and Eating Lab. Um, we are a research center with a focus on childhood obesity. Um, on the SNAP-Ed side of things, we do have several team members. Um, in addition to myself, there is Allison Bainey, who is also a nutrition educator, Alicia Leach, who is a research project manager, and Lindsay Hess, who is also a research project manager. And unfortunately, they all had prior obligations and were not able to join us today. Um, a little bit about our programming, though. Through the USDA snap -Ed program, we receive funding to provide lessons and activities that aim to increase healthy eating, increase the likelihood that kids try new foods, especially fruits and vegetables, and increase physical activity and reduce screen time. Um, just to get a bigger picture of where we are located, um, we do provide um, programming in several counties in addition to the ones at Summit. Um, so here's kind of a little map of where um, we are providing that programming at. Um, but to focus, of course, on Summit, we do provide outreach programs for preschool children and school age children through the Healthy Kids program. And we also provide programming for adults. So in regards to our Healthy Kids Club programming this year, um, what's different and what's the same? Um, within the preschool programming, things that are a little bit different this year, we have switched curricula. Um, we are using the Harvest for Healthy Kids Club curriculum, 
And this year, we are also partnering with teachers to complete lessons in person. So we are teaching three of the lessons, um, and teachers are teaching the other three of the lessons that we're presenting this year. Um, what's the same this year for preschoolers? Um, lesson information and materials are housed on our website, which we're super excited about. Um, in prior years, we have been sending a ton of information uh, via piecemeal through email, and it was just, um, it got to be very overwhelming. So we're very happy that we have that website and we're able to maintain that for this year. Um, on the school age side of things, um, what's different? We are using the Catch Kids Club curriculum this year, and new programming has been launched at after school locations. Um, things are the same um, this year. Again, we are excited that we're presenting lessons in person at those summer camp locations. So our preschool curriculum this year, a little bit about that. Um, we are using Harvest for Healthy Kids, which is a garden-themed curriculum featuring six lessons. Um, each of the lessons focus on a separate set of objectives and are centered around a feature book that teaches kids about new foods. Um, the curriculum does feature family newsletters with recipes that are sent home to kind of connect the classroom to what is um, happening in the home. Um, some lesson highlights from that curriculum. Each lesson does feature a read aloud book and, a dis book and discussion, an overview of how each food grows and different varieties of each food, and a discussion about other words that have similar beginning sounds and as well as an opportunity for children to touch, smell, and taste the lesson food. And that part of it is a lot of fun for me going into classrooms, just being able to pass around beets, for example, and talking to the kids about how the foods grow and the different parts of the plant um, and the different varieties of beets. And it's a lot of fun to see them, you know, smelling the foods and looking at the foods and making different observations. So that's been a huge um, plus for me this year. With the school age curriculum, this year we are using Catch Kids Club. Um, for the after school programming, we are teaching um, several lessons, or we have presented several lessons that teach healthy habits related to physical activity and reduced screen time. At the summer campsites, um, we are currently developing eight lessons with a go, woe, and slow food theme, including some basic concepts as well as topics around snacking. Um, lesson highlights from that curriculum, the lesson plans cover kindergarten through fifth grades or are split into kindergarten through second grade and third through fifth grades um, for those lesson topics that might be appropriate for one group and not the other. Um, each lesson, of course, um, has a period of discussion followed by some activities which can include songs, games, art, um, brainstorming activities, and movement activities. Um, to continue on with those lessons and to build upon um, what the kids have learned. We also present um, each of the teachers with some optional activities that they can use after that lesson. So some of the materials that we have provided include um, for the preschool classrooms, we've given each child lunch bags this year. Um, each classroom did receive six books that they're able to keep and use um, however they want. Um, at the after school and summer camp locations, each child is receiving a flying disc or a My Plate Beach Ball. And we have also provided some physical activity materials for them to use um, during their programming. So we also offer, um, in addition to that umbrella of the Healthy Kids Club programming um, for the school age and the preschool kids, we also do offer some adult programming options. Um, currently, there are three online programs that we have developed, including Eat Healthy, Be Active. Um, we do have infant, toddler, and child online modules that talk with um, talk parents through different feeding topics for each one of those age ranges. And we also offer a program called My Plate for My Family. So looking ahead, in conclusion, we are excited to continue our partnership with Summit into FY24. And we are looking forward to continue programming using the Harvest for Healthy Kids and Catch Kids Club curricula. 
Thank you for listening today. It's been a lot of fun um, being in the classrooms. I just want to say that I'm so, so excited to be back um, in the classrooms with kids and teachers, and it's been a really great year. Great. Thanks, Amber. Does anybody have any questions for Amber? We've appreciated her. She, you're here since the beginning, since we started, weren't you, Amber? I'm pretty sure you were the nutrition educator we had right from the start. So I mean, she's been here the last couple of years. Like she said, we haven't seen her in person for, for a little bit, but now it's it's good to have her back. Um, yeah, I think that everybody is in agreement. You know, we had done the um, virtual programming for a while and that got us through those couple of very trying years, but I really do think that everybody is in agreement that the in-person programming is really so much more ideal for the kids at that age. Um, it's just been a lot of fun getting back, um, doing what I really love to do and just seeing the kids in person. It's been really great. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to do virtual tasting, you know, when, <laughs> you know, that works a little better in person. Yeah. So, okay. I have a, I have a quick question. Oh, yeah. For Amber. Um, so you mentioned the online modules for parents around infant, toddler, and child feeding. Where would be the best place um, to direct families to that resource? So we do have an adult programming flyer that has been circulated several times, and um, that flyer does outline um, each one of those options. Um, if that's something that you're interested in um, distributing out, I can certainly get that out to you. Um, just send me an email and I'd be happy to provide that. Perfect, thank you. Yep. Okay, if there's no other questions for Amber, um, we're gonna just move on just to ask if anybody has any input, suggestions or comments about um, our programs for Head Start and Early Head Start or anything that we discussed today, you know, through Summit um, with our programs and our um, components, or if um, anybody has any kind of, you know, comments or improvements, um, anybody have anything for our Head Start, Early Head Start programs? I know we went through a lot of things in the beginning. Um, anybody have any questions or comments? Of what's going on here? I, I mean, we're trying, try to, provide like what was going on here so you kind of know what's um, happening here with health and nutrition, but if anybody has any questions. Okay, um, and does anybody want to share about any upcoming events or um, things that are going on in their program? I know Rachel shared a few things that are coming up that they're going to be doing, so anybody have any kind of um, health fairs or fundraisers or anything? So the Beaver Community Fair has a community event coming up on April 22nd. It's going to be a star party. So we're looking for um, youth organizations or organizations that, that provide programming to youth and families to set up tables related to space, stars, astronomy, whatever you want to do that have activities that can the families can rotate through before we actually break out the telescopes at nine o'clock when it gets dark and look at the stars. So that is April 22nd. Um, we'll start at seven. Susquehanna University is partnering with, partnering with us on that event. Um, so it is out on the Beaver Community Fairs Facebook page. But if any of you have activities or things that, um, you know, or another organization you belong to that you would like to have a table at that at that event, um, reach out to um, us on that website or on the Facebook page and we'll get you the information. Okay, thanks for sharing that. That sounds really cool. We're hoping. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a free event that anybody can yes. just come and, yep. and join in and nice. Yep. Good. Okay. Well, if no one else has anything to share, um, we have a short video that we would like to um, share with all of you before we end the meeting. Yeah. 
And I do just want to say I did put the survey link in the chat box. So if you weren't comfortable talking when Holly asked for any suggestions for us, there are questions to answer within that survey and evaluation that you can put some input in. I need you and you need me left alone we will never be who we could be so take my hand and don't forget that we can do anything together oh 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 Oh, 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 just one drop of your love, a single ray of sun, just one thing to change the world. It's just you and me, starting with a dream and giving it all we've got. Only takes one drop only takes one drop only takes one drop only takes one drop come with me now look and see how there's an ocean overflowing with our hope so let's jump in and take a swim it's you and me yeah, forever oh, 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 oh Just one drop of your love A single ray of sun Just one thing to change the world It's just you and me Starting with a dream and giving it all we've got Only takes one drop Only takes one drop Only takes one drop Only takes one drop I need you And you need me We can do anything together Okay, well, this concludes our meeting. Um, please don't forget to complete the survey that gives us um, some ideas and feedback. Um, I want to thank you for taking time to participate in our health advisory uh, meeting and a big thank you for all the summit staff too that was involved in making this year a successful United, um, Union Snyder Health Services um, Advisory Committee meeting, and also a big thank you to all of our partners that help us address health and nutrition concerns of the children and family in the communities. Um, we couldn't do everything without your assistance, and a big thank you to all the parents that joined today, um, too, and the involvement you have with um, the Head Start and the Early Head Start programs. Um, so that's it. That concludes the meeting. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.
Want to talk about anything? You're muted, Holly. Now you're muted. You <laughs> I said I, I get so busy, I don't even look at the chats and I'm like just looking at everybody that what everybody said here. Okay. I didn't know Karen Vines. She's the dental health clinic person now. Oh, she's parent, toddler one. Nice work. That Nobody likes to be very, on camera. I'll say very, that. Very, very smoothly. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, we that's didn't have, we didn't have to mute anybody this time. No, no, when no, no parents even talked, did they? No. No. There weren't as many on as, 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 as had registered, but there mm -hmm. were like two or three Snyder County parents who that's all good. registered for Mifflin County. So I don't know. Yeah, the Seesaw. Or, yeah. Yeah, Liz Seesock, she's on it. Yeah, there, there wasn't quite as many as signed up. I think there was 22. A lot of great content. I really, I mean, I learned a few things for yeah, sure, for like sure. new information, different aspects of programs that these groups yeah. provide. So I have some notes. <laughs> yeah, I I thought too that everybody shared a lot of good information. I didn't realize. I mean, I haven't been on the Evan Wellness for a while, but they do mm -hmm. it too. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. ramped up quite a bit. So I have lots of things to share. Now. I know. Yeah. Well, how on your end, Kalisha, is there anything that we could do different or better or change? I mean, I, I'm I'm great with everything that, the way yeah. everything went, but maybe yeah, something. everything worked. I I just felt bad that I had Chris's stuff. I on. know. I'm sorry. That was like th this morning, like at eight or nine o'clock. They said, "Hey, Emily's," and I said, oh, "Okay, thanks," and that was it. I didn't think to tell you because I just oh, just uh, FYI, we're still recording. <laughs>